This lesson is going to be on how to use in-text citation in a research paper and also how to properly cite your sources in um, full MLA format. So my paper is about colony collapse disorder and in my introduction I wanted to use research because I thought it would be um, really good for effect. So I found an article that I wanted to use research from which is this article by Tom Turner, The Case of the Vanishing Bees. So I read through the article and I found information that I wanted and then what I did was in my paper I paraphrased what I was going to use. Now regardless whether you paraphrase, whether you quote, or whether you summarize something, you still have to cite it. So there are two things that you have to do to cite it. The first thing you have to do is um, cite the full citation in MLA format. So an easy way to do that is to copy and paste the URL and then you can go to this website called easybib.com and you can just cite it um, through this website. So you copy and paste the website into make sure you have MLA um, and it's a website you can choose book, video, journal, database, anything else that you want and then you just go to cite it. Uh, while this is loading, um, how you cite something in MLA format, you're basically looking for an author, a title, um, so here's the author, here's the title of the article you're looking for, the website information, any kind of publishing information which can be found usually towards the bottom, um, any page numbers if possible, any volume numbers. So what you're doing is taking that information and you're just listing it in, in a um, sentence-like form, although it won't be complete sentences. You just put a period after each thing that you need. It's just so that somebody can find what you use in your paper. But it's just easy to go here and go to easybib.com. So you go to cite it and oftentimes it'll ask if this is the right website and then you just hit cite this and it's going to find some information for you and then it'll still need you to find information. So you just click on continue to the final step. Now at any point in time, whatever is highlighted in red, if you cannot find, you just leave a blank. So it's asking if there is an author. And I already know the author because I looked it up. It's Tom Turner. So I'm going to put Tom Turner in. Um, it has everything else here. It's looking for the publisher or sponsor. So I'll go back to the website. Most of the time it can be where the copyright information is. Um, let's see here. It's down here it says 2017 Earth Justice. So I'm going to write Earth Justice right here. Um, it asks if you want to display the URL. It's not required, but I still think it's good to um, display the URL. So I would say yes, go ahead and display it, but it's not a big deal if you don't. I just like it so I can check on your websites if possible. It'll ask for the date that the article was electronically published. And here it was April 11th. It found it for you. And then it'll ask for the date accessed, which it'll just automatically put in, and which is today. So looks like we have everything. Just go to create citation. Um, while this is, oh sorry, it already loaded, so then what you'll do is you'll copy and paste the citation. This is your full citation. This is what it should look like. You have your author, you have the title, you have the title of the website, you have um, the date it was written, when you accessed it, any other publishing information, and then you have the URL. Okay, this is absolutely necessary, and this goes in your works cited page. A works cited page will be at the bottom of um, your essay, the bottom of the page of your essay, you can put a page break after that. Um, last paragraph of your essay if you want to keep it organized. But all you would do would be to copy it, or highlight it, copy it, and then you want to paste it in your works cited page um, and put it in alphabetical order. I already have it here so I'm not going to um, paste it again and that way it's cited in your works cited page. So now you can go back and cite it within your paper using in-text citation. And all you do for in-text in citation is you look, sorry now I'm scrolling really fast here, you look to see what the first word of your citation in your works cited page is. Most of the time it's going to be the author's last name. So if, these, if it's the author's last name, you just take the author's last name, put it in parentheses at the end of the research fact. This is all the only piece of information I got from the article. Put it in parentheses and then you put the page number. If there is no page number on the websites, which it doesn't look like there's one in here. I just put a one because technically the web page is just one page. So I just put Turner space one and the parentheses period. 
So now if someone's reading my paper, that person can look here and um, find you know, where I get this information and scroll all the way down to my Works Cited page and find the exact place where I get that information. So you have to make sure that your Works Cited page matches the in-text citation. It's all the way up. Okay, and then I ended up using it again earlier. Um, and of course, I use my own words. I paraphrase it, which you definitely can. You can summarize. I'm not a big fan of quoting unless you cannot say it better. Now, if there is no author, let me find an example in this paper where there possibly is no author. Um, you will have to use the first few words of the title. Okay, so right here is an example. Let me highlight it so you can see. Okay, sorry, I meant to highlight, not text. So let me highlight it so you can see. Um, 10 things, if I scroll down, I should be able to find the citation, which is right here, 10 things. So if there is no author, you want to just use, again, a shortened version of the title. Um, and so I'm shortening this title, and I just put 10 things, so it matches up right here. But no matter what, you have to use what is in your citation. So that's why I think it's important that you do your citation first so you can find what goes into your in-text citation. So hopefully that clears some things up for some of you that might have some questions on how to do it properly. Please make sure you view this um, tutorial and then anything else, like any other websites that I have, just to make sure that you're doing it right. Because if you do it wrong for one assignment and you don't fix it, it's going to be wrong for the entire time. Okay, so that was just a quick rundown. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact me.